So this is more of like the technical side of YouTubing for people who don't exactly know what to do, what to get, how to hoo-ha. This is where some people might start feeling kind of bad about themselves. And I would like to emphasize that there are a lot of things you can do for free when it comes to VTubing. However, not everything is free. Nothing in life is truly free. Unfortunately, there are some expenses you're gonna have to do if you wanna become a VTuber. More so if you want to just do IRL creation because realistically, you don't need to have as many like purchases for IRL stuff compared to VTubing. Although that could be argued, that could be argued because you have to worry about lighting, you have to worry about like your environment because it gets seen on camera. So it, it could be argued. Either way, content creation costs money. There is no way around that. However, you can definitely make things more affordable for yourself. You don't have to be spending 10 grand to start VTubing. Let's talk a little bit about hardware. I have audio listed first because I believe audio is the most important thing that you need to spend money on, without a doubt. Because people are more willing to deal with the shitty video, but not shitty audio. I have auditory sensory issues due to my ADHD. There are certain sounds I can't tune out. Very specifically, you know the sound when people make when they go, that she sells seashells by the seashore. If I can hear that to to an extent where it is it, it is almost ear piercing if the microphone is not configured properly and I have a meltdown over it. It's why I don't watch a lot of live streamers because the problem with live streaming is that you can't, like if you didn't set up your audio stuff correctly in the beginning, it's gonna sound like the entire time unless you wanna spend like a million years fixing it. Whereas a video, you can kinda edit it a bit in post unless if it's so bad, unless if it's so bad. God, that's why we need audio engineers in this scene. Audio is very important. So I listed a couple different microphones on here. There are tons of microphones. There are so many microphones. I just listed like a couple of them that are in different like price ranges because some people can't afford an expensive microphone. Like I understand that, I, I do. And you don't have to have expensive to be good. You can make a Blue Yeti Snowball sound amazing. It, you just have to take more time to configure it. And a Blue Yeti Snowball, I believe it goes for, I'm, I'm just looking up the prices for it real quick. A Blue Yeti Snowball costs about $35 right now. It's on sale on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a USB microphone that you just plug into your computer and you can configure it to sound pretty decent. It's not going to have beautiful quality, of course, but it is a great like start, especially if you don't have a lot of money. Then the other one I listed here is it's also on sale right now. I've never used this microphone. It's by Audio Pro, it's a USB, uh, it's another USB microphone. This one's $33 right now on Amazon. And then I have here an Avermedia Livestreamer MIC 330. This one is a little bit more expensive. It's at $60 cause it's on sale right now. And this is a dynamic microphone. So this would be the one that you'd have to connect to like an audio interface and have an XLR cable, but the quality is a bit better because it's more directional. So these two microphones pick up all the sound that's in your room and you have to kind of mess around with the settings to not get all that unwanted noise. Whereas this one, it only picks up in the direction that it, it's in front of. So what I'm currently using right now is a Shure SM7B that was given to me by a friend because I can't afford Shure SM7B. It's an expensive ass microphone, but it was given to me. So if I move away from my microphone, you'll kind of notice my voice kind of kicks off here a little bit. But if I get right back into the microphone, if I get really close to the microphone, this is what a directional microphone does. There are lots of great affordable microphone options out there. I only had two hours to make this PowerPoint, but I, if you go into the bio, if you're watching this on YouTube and you go into like my little like video bio, like my description, I have links down below everything that I am talking about in today's stream. So all of the equipment I have up here, um, I will, I have to go back in and add in the software stuff. So that is in there as well. So you can check out all that stuff. I will add more items to, to this list as I have time to, but these are just like kind of the, a general idea to give yourself somewhat of an idea. Don't go for expensive or high tech ones if you don't understand what you want for your audio. That is such a great point. Oh my gosh. I plan on making a video with an actual audio engineer to talk more about this because yes, that is correct. What's the point of buying a Shure SM7B if you don't even know how to actually use it properly or if it turns out to not be the sound that you want? Very good point. Now, in terms of soundproofing, 
this is another big deal. When you're using microphones like this, where it picks up all like all the sounds in here, you kind of have to soundproof stuff. Right now, my mini fridge is going off and I don't think you guys can hear it anymore. You used to be able to hear it because my directional microphone used to be, um, like my mini fridge used to be in the same direction as my um, directional microphone. And I didn't realize that for the longest time. And when I would edit my videos, I go, there's always this weird humming sound. I'm using a Shure SM7B, that's so weird. Why? And I'm like, oh, it's directional. So now I moved it away. So you shouldn't be able to hear that little tiny hum. That's kind of part of soundproofing. You can also get foam panels and stuff too. You could put like a giant blanket around yourself if you're okay with sweating. <laughs> there's lots of different ways to kind of muffle and mute out those unwanted sounds. And there's also different ways to kind of EQ and use like some software or, you know, if you have an audio interface to help you get rid of unwanted sounds like a fan and stuff like that. So going back to video now. Yes, I know, I know some of you are in here and you're seeing Logitech and you're thinking, oh my lord, she's just showing us the expensive stuff. I put Logitech on here because it's one of the better quality webcams that you can use, but there are more affordable webcams that get the job done. Why do you kind of need the video stuff here? This is for your model tracking. So you have the audio so people can hear you. You have the video to track your model because you're going to use the video tracking software, uh, software, hardware, to put and track your model in these software programs that we'll talk about in a second. You'll notice here, I have a webcam, I have an iPhone and I have a mouse and keyboard. That's because there are many different ways to track your model. You can use a webcam, you can use a phone, or you can literally use a mouse and keyboard and have it, have your model react to different inputs based off of those controls. Depending on your price range, what you can afford and what you even wanna do, these are kind of the options that you have. And I do have videos explaining how to use different versions of these two VTube if you're interested in looking at that kind of stuff. Other devices is gonna be like audio interfaces, um, more like soundproofing, uh, things like a computer itself. Some people use lap. I've seen people who just VTube on a laptop and it's like, I don't know how they do it with how intensive VTubing is. If you got like a good gaming laptop though, it can be done. But what, am, what kind of setup am I using? I use a two PC setup and you might be thinking, Mari's in here just bragging about all. No, so I use a two PC setup. However, my streaming computer has like the bare minimum requirements that it needs to have in order to live stream and run VTube Studio. And I do this because I came to realize that I used to have a one PC setup, and but I came to realize that my model's tracking started messing up pretty badly when I tried to do a one PC setup and then play like a game that was really heavily like resource, uh, it was resource hungry. And so I noticed someone earlier mentioned Senpai Gaming as like a YouTuber that kind of explains all this stuff and he makes really great videos. So it doesn't, I think his name is Expo. There's a lot of like great YouTubers out there who make amazing tutorial content on how to set up for streams. For IRL people, I followed some of their tutorials and it almost nearly crashed my computer because I'm a VTuber. Their setups are meant to really optimize IRL style content creation, not VTubing. You have to keep in mind, you are not just turning on your camera and going live. You are turning on your camera, you are setting up either VTube Studio or a 3D tracking program and any other tools you want to interact with your model like VBridger, like um, Tits, whatever like stream bot applications you want to have, all of it. That takes up resources on your computer. I am going to be making more videos explaining kind of how to set up your stuff to optimize VTube a bit better for yourself because people don't take that into consideration since the only tutorials that exist out here are for IRLs. That is why I use a two PC setup because the games that I was playing, the software that I'm using, do you know VR chat takes up so much resources and there's like a whole configuration you got to do to optimize VR chat. And then you want a VTube on top of that. Good luck, honey, unless you want to spend a lot of money on a computer. So I separated my computers to help offload the work for that. That is my reasoning for two PC setup. You do not need to do that. You can get by with a one PC setup. I did it for years. I just got kind of tired of it because again, the stuff I personally wanted to do, my computer couldn't handle it. So I separated them. If you got a beefy PC, if all you're going to kind of do is just sit here and react to videos and like just chat or ASMR, you probably, you know, you don't need like the intensive two PC setup. You could probably get away with just one. It just depends on what it is you want to do. You can also VTube on just your phone. You don't even need to use a computer, but then you want to make sure you at least have a good microphone to connect to your phone 
So that way you're not using, like, I mean, your phone's microphone, like, quality is pretty good, but I still recommend getting an actual microphone for it, you know? It will be better. But yes, you can just V2, but just your phone. And these are the different types of, like, software that you can use. For 2D tracking programs, you can, the most popular one is VTube Studio. We used to have FaceRig. I, I'm pretty sure FaceRig and, oh god, what was that other one? PRPR Live, I think it was. There was some other ones out there, but no one uses them anymore. And I think one of them got discontinued. So VTube Studio is kind of like the one for live 2D, at least. V, um, Vito Tube Mini and PNG Tubey, they don't have like a logo. They're really good for PNG and GIF tubing. Reactive is a really great collaborative tool for PNGs and GIFs. If you're like, you know, you just want to have like a reactive PNG. There are some 3D tracking programs. These are all free, by the way. You can get... A DLC for VTube Studio that does cost money to get into collabs and remove the watermark. Um, but these are all free. For 3D tracking programs, we have VC Face, we have Warudo, we have VR Chat. These are free. And then we have Luppet. Luppet is not free. You have to pay for it. But this is how you would track your 3D model. Oh, was it called Animes? Was it was it called Animes? Gosh, there are there are more live 2D tracking programs. This is just the most popular choice. The they get there, like I said, there are other ones out there. You can Google. And find out more. I made this PowerPoint in two hours. So yeah. In terms of platforms, if you're trying to like stream and stuff, you can multi-stream. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitch and YouTube. I also want to stream to TikTok and Instagram at some point. I haven't set up my vertical live streams for that just yet because vertical and horizontal have different setups and you kind of have to take that into consideration when doing that.